Are you thinking about reading Dr. Harvey Karp's Happiest Baby on the Block? Or have you been recommended the book from a family member or friend and not quite sure if it's worth your time? Well, I'm going to break it down into four key points and share why knowing some of these are most likely going to lower your anxiety levels and give you confidence around newborns. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time we post a video about baby and toddler sleep advice. Now, all babies cry, and that's a good thing. It's their only form of communication that can alert us to something pretty important, whether it be hunger, a wet nappy, if they're too hot or too cold, for example. But we're not always taught how to deal with a crying baby, and it can be so intense and soul-destroying if it keeps going. However, crying in newborns is completely understandable given the incredibly comfy road they've had in mummy's tummy to date. This leads me to the first key point, which is the missing fourth trimester. Now, Dr. Karp explains the pretty compelling argument that babies are born three months too early. For example, newborns are literally fetus-like and not able to smile, interact, or move controllably in comparison to, say, a horse which can run pretty much the next day after birth. Now, there are tremendous developmental changes in the first three to four months, but they still yearn for that incredibly warm, loud, nourishing and secure environment that they had in the womb. When you compare this womb environment to the real world, it's no wonder that a change can quite easily upset and cause a crying episode. And it can happen very regularly, as you'd imagine. So, if you have a crying baby and you go through the checklist of checking for hunger, gas, wet diaper, whether they're too hot or too cold, and there's still no pleasing baby, you may want to initiate the womb via the second key point, which is the calming reflex. Now, the calming reflex is something that babies are born with, and they hold on to it, fortunately, for a few months after birth. It's like nature's off switch and it sends them into a zen-like state that completely mellows them out within sometimes minutes. However, much like trying to get a reflex from below the kneecap, for example, if you miss the sweet spot, uh, you can miss the reflex altogether. Now, triggering this coming reflex comes down to the science and art of mimicking the, the mother's womb, which leads to the next key point, uh, known as the five S's. Now the first is swaddling. Not only does it prevent the arms from flailing around and accidentally waking the baby, it provides a really safe and secure sensation, much like the womb. The second S is side or stomach position. Now it's important to note that this is only for calming your baby and not for sleeping, as the back position is a universal recommendation for safe sleep. Rolling the baby onto their side or stomach while supporting them obviously can stimulate a womb-like sensation in the inner ear and create that calmness. The third is shushing. Now, it sounds crazy and counterintuitive, but loud shushing mimics the loud and intense whooshing that they heard while inside the womb from all the blood flow. Think of it as, as being as loud as a vacuum cleaner. Now, the fourth is swinging. This womb-like motion is an intuitive favourite amongst parents and it's getting the motion right with the head receiving a slightly different motion or jiggle that can be tricky. You need to take into consideration the child's safety by only allowing very small inch-like motions back and forth uh, compared to wobbling a bit of jello on a, on a plate without it falling over, for example. The fifth is sucking. And for some, this can have an absolutely immediate effect and often complements these others nicely. It's worth noting, however, that if the baby is breastfed, ideally avoid a pacifier or bottle in the first few weeks to avoid any confusion for both baby and mother's milk supply. So what is the best advice you've received for calming a newborn? Please comment below. Now this leads to the fourth key point known as the cuddle cure which is the sum and perfect combination of these five S's for your little one. As all babies are different, it may take a bit of experimenting. But once a baby reaches two to three months, it's common to start the weaning process to reduce any sleep associations that may occur. For example, reducing the swinging first, 
followed by uh, re uh, reducing the pacifier and the swaddling. Now, if all these techniques have taken place and the baby is still fussing, please acknowledge that it may be part of the 10 or 15% of babies that do suffer from a more serious medical condition and should be seen by a medical professional. Now, if you need more help to get your newborn sleeping better, please feel free to download our newborn guide with the seven foundations to establish healthy sleep habits. You'll find the link below. And be sure to check out this next video on how to put your newborn to sleep by walking you through step by step the five S's in under two minutes. Thanks again for watching.